Hello and welcome everyone. Today we will be having a lecture on classification of activities and criteria and principles for successful program. The great variety of activities or events that occupy the leisure time of people is called recreation. Indeed, the ever growing field of recreation and leisure is limitless, ranging from the low organized type of those requiring high organized planning from individual to group enjoyments. Some activities can be physical, others are characterized by mental or social skills and interest. Planning is the process of arranging the various elements of a program in manners designed to obtain constructive and worthwhile results. Effective planning and organizing can help attain immediate goals and determine long range objectives. Participants at the first national workshop on recreation agreed that the objective of program planning is to provide those experiences that will bring to the participant the most satisfying values and that in addition will have desirable social effect. Recreation leaders must organize and conduct activities in a manner that will accomplish this major objective. In planning a successful program, the agency or individual must understand the essential elements in providing wholesome and satisfying recreation experiences. Many factors that can determine the failure of the program must be considered and thoroughly analyzed. Let us look at the classification of recreational activities. Recreational activities can be grouped in a number of ways. The traditional approach however is to classify activities according to several broad areas or types of recreation interest. In an attempt to provide satisfactory coverage of the vast number of recreation activities and programs, they have been classified into the following big 10 in the program area as art and crafts, dancing, dramatics, music, hobbies, sports and games, outdoor recreation, clubs, social recreation and special events. All types of recreation have one characteristic in common. They provide an important outlet for some basic urge or need. Recreation programs cover a wide range of opportunities. Because of the varied backgrounds of the people, the difference in education and skill levels, agencies and organizations responsible for providing recreation and leisure services have had to develop programs as broad as the human interest. An active game fosters socialization as physical exercise promotes relaxation and social ease. Games can be divided into categories of low organization and high organization. In games of low organization, the rules are simple with minimum of social interaction and cooperation required on the part of the players. Games of high organization are more advanced than low organized games because they require greater skills, agility, kinesthetic sense and socialization skills. Let us look into the principles of game leadership. Select games with the age group, skills and game literacy of the participants in mind. Plan the program thoroughly prior to the arrival of the participants. From the start, teach the participants to respect the sound of the whistle or whatever means of directions is used. Teach the game in simple, concise language example the name of the game, explain the game, demonstrate where needed and ask question to assure participant understanding. Use penalties sparingly if at all needed as they reduce the sheer enjoyment of play. Encourage in participants such attributes as sportsmanship and playing to the best of one's ability.
Next let us see the criteria and principles of a successful program. In addition to correct execution of guidelines and principles such as those just listed, there are a number of special factors or ingredients that are essential to dynamic program. First is the creativity. Creative thinking can be a great asset to any recreation staff. William Penn Mott Jr. believes that the best recreation program is one that fosters the type of climate that encourages imaginative, positive thinking, new ideas and the desire to excel. According to Mott, we must dare to try new ideas to meet the great social changes of our time. If he is timid and afraid to accept and try new ideas, even the most imaginative person soon becomes frustrated and discouraged. Although some educators believe you are either born with it or you are not, Charles L. Nullily firmly believes that everybody is creative. The problem is how to get it out. But you are not going to get creativity from me. You are not going to get tingle from me. Neither can you search for creativity. You just have to live your life openly and freely with interest and vigor and excitement and you will be creative. The whole concept of creativity is bringing things together that never existed before. The following are some of Moth's guidelines that can start any department along the path of creative programming. Permit free and open discussion of all problems. Give the department heads equal opportunity to review all plans. Encourage employees and provide incentives and opportunities for them to receive continuing education. Think. Hold regular staff meetings and general meetings of all employees. Communicate. Encourage ideas and act upon them giving due credit. Or if rejected, give reason. Create an atmosphere of urgency and action. Allow employees to freedom of judgment and permit calculated risk, decision and review your operation. Are you up to date or are you just satisfied? There is just one ingredient for a successful program that no formula can provide and that is imagination. The creative leader has the imagination, vision and ingenuity to think or dream up all types of imaginative happenings and fun situations. The leader sees things through the eyes of his followers. He puts himself in their shoes and helps them make their dream come through. Keeping in mind what the needs and desires of the participants are, he strives to inject in his program spontaneous, fresh activities and even the occasional crazy stunts. The imaginative and creative leader is particularly popular on the playground where a child's ability to dream and imagine knows no bounds. The leader simply has to draw it out. Bringing to the playground Captain Bloody Bones or some fictitious character will excite every child's interest and fancy. Next is communication. Success and failure in leadership is often determined by how well leaders communicate with their followers. Basically, communication is the process by which one person influences another. The following are some important steps to better communication. Think clearly before you speak. Listen intently to your group. Make sure your group can see and hear you. Speak persuasively with feeling and assurance. Know your subject, what you are talking about. Be brief, concise and to the point. Choose your words wisely. Use your voice to the best advantage, loud and clear when necessary. Have good diction, enunciate and emphasize keywords. Use a proper pace rather than a rapid chatter. Speak with confident and a positive frame of mind. Have an idea what you want to say, then go ahead and finally say it. Third point 
is flexibility. Program plan should be flexible enough so that they may be revised to cope with changing conditions and unexpected needs. The alert leader anticipates difficulties and prepares for them. Flexibility calls for some important foresight, the anticipation on the part of both the planning staff and the leaders. The necessary alternatives and resources for flexibility must be available. For example, a picnic group in the event or rain or inclement weather should have adequate indoor facilities with which to change from an outdoor setting to an indoor one. The leader who has a wide assortment of games, program materials and offering will have the flexibility to appropriate changes and adjustments when necessary. Fourth is praise and encouragement. No other tactic can achieve the result that praise and pleasure in individuals' accomplishments can provide. Desire can be greatly diminished or destroyed completely by a lack of response or by discouragements by the leader. Leaders should give praise when their participants do something good. People respond quickly and affirmatively to praise. The leader must never let the learner get frustrated or give up. Keep working Jimmy, you can do it, should be steadily repeated by the leader. Learning from mistakes should take place in a friendly and relaxed atmosphere. Participants should not be unduly embarrassed, ridiculed or humiliated because of the errors they make while learning. Therefore, by praising what they do correctly, the leader can encourage his pupils to keep trying until they master the skill. Fifth important criteria is motivation. The ability to persuade people to participate is one of the most important qualities of leadership. Leadership involves the ability to motivate and persuade people to take some kind of action. The leader's ability to motivate his group is often determined by his skills of communication. Next, dedication. The dedicated leader has great pride in himself, his organization and profession. He is never satisfied with an adequate performance, merely getting the job done. He is continuously striving for excellence, giving 100%. He is ready to give extra effort at all times. Courageous and devoted to high level of services, he will never give up but always strive for progress and a better program. The leader who will hang in there even under difficult circumstances can set a great example for both his followers and fellow staff members. Let's look at the basic principles in recreation program. Following are just a few of the principles which can serve as a guide to program planning. Some of the ways in which these planning principles can be used. First is the program should consist of many and varied activities related to the needs, interest and abilities of both sexes and of all ages. The worth of an activity should be assessed in terms of its effect upon the people. The program should be people centered. The program consists of activities that develop values sought by leadership. The program should emphasize activities that relate to one another. Effective leadership is the backbone of any successful recreation program. Leaders should invite participants to share responsibility for the program planning. Involve the participants. Thirdly, the program should be developed that are acceptable to the culture, customs and traditions of community. An effective program must provide activities in which people are interested and strive for more satisfying and rewarding experiences. The program should provide lifetime activity in which interest will continue over many years. Fourth is to provide equal opportunities it should be extended to everyone, regardless of race, creed, social or economic status. The program 
should be sufficiently flexible to permit adaptation to varying situations. Grouping is a significant factor in programming. Another point would be the program development should be positive in direction but gradual in pace. Adequate financial support is necessary for the success of any activity or program. Safe and helpful conditions should be the focus of all recreational activities. Next, the continuous evaluation is a major factor in program improvement. Opportunities should be provided for a family to play together. Programs should offer relaxing activities as well as active forms of recreation. The needs of ill and handicapped should be served with a well-rounded program. Overplan rather than underplan. Have a keen eye for detail. Use a checklist in most areas of planning and organizing. All recreators should have a sound knowledge and understanding of the policies, rules and regulations stated in the department's policy manual. To conclude, a program of recreation activities should be determined by the needs, interests and desires of the people to be served. Unfortunately, many programs in the past have developed from various biases and individual interest or for the mere convenience of the administrative staff. Through participation in activities, a person has an opportunity to realize personal objective as well as the objective of the group. Although the needs of participants are foremost in determining program objectives, the aim of any program should be in a line with the sound and wholesome education and cultural philosophy. In addition, the overall objectives of the agency should have a direct bearing on program offering and priorities. In planning recreation programs, it is essential to determine the need of each neighborhood or area within the community. In conducting such a comprehensive inventory, a detailed study of all the facilities and services should be carried out by the Recreation and Park Department. Indicating what is available and what is missing, the study should include departmental programs as well as programs offered by private, voluntary and commercial agencies. Thank you.